Hi everybody, my name is Janelle. I am a contortionist and aerialist based out of Denver. Um, I have another meeting right after this, so here's my circusy stuff that I can take off real quickly when we're finished and it may fall off during the workout. We'll just have to see how that goes. Um, I'm gonna be leading our uh, splits section at the end of the workout. Um, and I just wanna extend you know, great thanks to everybody who's here. Uh, a special thanks to everybody who is able to donate. I know that not everybody is and we never expect it, but when I do get a little Venmo from Cressy at the end of the week, it is like, oh, I can buy the fancy coffee instead of the crappy coffee, you know? And it just feels really nice to be cared for that way. Um, and a huge thanks to Cressy for all the hard work that you do to make this happen, because there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. There are so many spreadsheets. Uh, she's working really hard just to be extremely fair and transparent and communicative with the coaches, and it really, really is like a labor of love. So, so happy to be part of this, and I will pass to Casey. Hey everybody, so excited um, that you guys are with us today. Um, we're gonna be focusing on circus lines today. Um, so a lot of different exercises and poses that we do in the air, such as straddles, splits, hollow bodies, hip keys, all that fun stuff. Since we don't have our apparatuses right now, or most of us don't, um, we're going to get to work on some of our lines and shapes and working on strengthening the muscles that we use for those poses. So once we finally do them again, hopefully sooner than later, uh, we'll be in good shape. Um, I'm Casey, for those of you I haven't met. I am a local Denver aerialist um, and dancer. I also do a little bit of performing as well and um, have super huge love and respect for Janelle, who I get to lead this workshop with. She's incredible. If you've never worked with her, you're in for a treat. Um, and then as well as what, echoing what Janelle said, a huge thank you to Cressy. You guys have no idea how much work she does for all of this. We really just um, enjoyed the break that we had, but we're super excited to be back with you guys. Appreciate any support you guys are able to give. Again, we super, super appreciate that. Since a lot of us are out of our current jobs, um, but we mostly just love seeing your faces and having you guys here. I know that's the highlight of my week is just to see you all online. Um, it's awesome. So um, have some water nearby, um, a mat, yoga mat, if you have a wood floor or something that you need a little support with. Um, we're going to also use a TheraBand um, later in the workshop, so if you have one of those, make sure you grab that. If you don't, no worries, you can do it without, or just use a scarf um, or a towel. Stazas use some of those in the workshops as well, so that'll work just fine uh, for what we're doing as well. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm super excited. I have my little, little circus tent in the background. I had a very small sling uh, in my closet that I draped over my ballet bar, so. I'm in the circus spirit here. Um, so uh, it is 11.05, so I just wanted to note my start time. So we're gonna start with a little warm up, you guys. Um, nothing crazy, um, just to kind of get the blood flowing uh, before we uh, get started here. So I'm gonna back this up a bit. So uh, we're gonna start out with just a little bit of cardio. So we're gonna do 40 uh, jumping jacks, um, 30 high knees, um, 20 butt kicks, and then we're gonna do 10 uh, plie squats. Just nice and easy, yeah? So just to warm up um, a little bit. Everybody can hear me okay before I go ahead and get started? Okay, perfect, sweet. If you can't hear me or can't see something, let me know. I'll be checking the chat section. All right, here we go, you guys. 40. Getting that heart rate pumping. Stretching those arms and legs. I know cardio is not my favorite thing, but Man, I feel like I've gotten in better cardio shape uh, since this all started than I was in before. So I'm happy about that. Let's say this is five, four, three, two, and one. High knees, here we go. Get them up there, all the way up to the top of the tent. Lift those knees up super high. Point those toes as they leave the floor. Keep breathing, we got 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and kick the booty. Kick the butt. Awesome. Point those toes as they leave the floor. Five, four, three, two, and one. Awesome. Turn it out and sit it down and up. Arms can do whatever you want. I'm just keeping mine here, dropping down. 
can do pretty extravagant arms. Anything you want to do. Here's three. Two, we're going to hold it down here at the bottom. Go ahead and bring your hands to your thighs. Just a little shift side to side. Catch your breath. I'm panting so hard. It's so sad. And go ahead and dip one shoulder down toward the ground. It should feel good. And then the other. And dip. And one more time. Awesome. From here, we're going to turn our legs in. So now I'm in a parallel position. I'm going to twist from my waist, reach left hand to right ankle, twist my spine. We're going to draw big circles with that right arm. As big as you can go. Really opening up those shoulders. We're going to do some upper body stuff for some of our arm lines today as well. So warming that up, we're going to reverse it. Circle in the opposite direction. Awesome. And then go ahead and come on up. Twist. Other side. Big circle. Big as you can make it. Awesome. Really reach through those fingers. And let's go ahead and reverse it. Awesome, you guys. One more time. And then go ahead and grab your elbows. Drop your torso. Drop your head. Let it be heavy. And just kind of give yourself a little moment. Again, thank yourself for coming and doing something fun for you, for being here this morning. Give yourself a little hug. And let's go ahead and walk the feet in, soft bend in the knees, and roll it all the way back up. Awesome, you guys. All right, we're going to go and work our way down to the floor. So I'm going to move my computer here. So I am further down. Perfect. Um, all right. Yay, that looks good. All right, so we're going to dive right in, you guys. Um, I'm going to have my phone nearby so we can track the time. So hollow body is a really big, important shape that we use in the circus. If you do acro or acrobatics, hand balancing, we often have to hold hollow body shapes when we're in the air. Um, so many different forms use that. So we're going to do a little warm up for our core here, incorporating hollow body. So if you're unfamiliar, hollow body, you want the entire low back imprinted on the ground. So you don't want to let that back arch at all, or you don't want that traditional neutral spine you have in Pilates. You want it to be all down, all connected. Now your legs can lower as far as you're comfortable, as long as you don't let that back arch. Arms can be by your side. Um, a little bit harder version is to have them overhead, but still keep the ribs in. I used to be what I call a rib popper. Pop my ribs out. So really think about your hip bones and the bottom of your ribs pulling toward each other. So we're going to hold this for five counts, five seconds, and then we're going to pull up into a tuck, hold for a count, and lower with control back to our hollow body. Then after five more seconds, we're going to lift up into a pike, hold it for a hot second, and lower back to hollow. Again, five seconds. Lift up into a straddle, hold, and lower. We're going to do that twice through. Your abs should be burning by the end of this. So again, tuck, pike, and straddle. All aerial poses and moves we use in the air. Nice straight knees for the pike. If you need to bend the knees a little bit, that's okay. Just make a choice to have it here or here rather than somewhere in the middle. Yeah, so when we're in the air, we really want to make specific decisions about whether our feet are flexed or pointed, knees bent and straight. So again, we're going to apply that right here. So here we go, you guys. Let's find that first hollow body shape. Pull it in, and here we go for five, four, three, two, and one. With control, pull it in. Hold, 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 hold. And see how slowly and controlled you can lower back to that hollow. Perfect. Breathing here. Five more seconds. Awesome, and lifting up to that pike. Stretch, 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 stretch. The hardest one, I think. And lower back. Five more seconds. Shoulders down, ribs in. And open up to that straddle. And hold back to hollow. One more set. Keep breathing. Check that that low back's on the mat. Pull it into that tuck. And reach the toes and arms away. And hold. Keep breathing. You guys got this. Lift up to that pike. Lift, 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 lift. Yes. And back down. 
Keep breathing, home stretch here. Lift up into that straddle, point those toes. Lower back to that hollow and release. Bring your knees into your chest. Rock a little side to side. That was awesome, you guys. That's one of my favorite go-tos to like get the core super warm. All right, so we're going to work on our pike and straddle inversions. Yes, I know we don't have an apparatus right now, but we're gonna work on the core muscles needed to invert. So from here, if you wanna hold on to something, you're welcome to. Um, I can give two examples. Um, you don't have to do this either. It's totally up to you. You can grab something like a chair um, and hold on like this. So when we do some of these inversions, you have something to hold on to. A couch works just as well. Um, again, you do not have to. This is totally up to you. But if you need a little bit of help, um, that was my section in the, um, illust in the illustration, <laughs> in the description. Um, but if you needed something to hold on to for that, this is the one. If you want to challenge yourself a bit more, um, you can have your arms down by your side. So you have your palms down, so you can still press into the floor a little bit to help. Hardest option is going to be arms overhead, no arm help, and just using your abs. All three are fantastic. You honestly just pick whichever one you want. Sometimes I prefer one over the other depending on the exercise. So I'll go ahead and show it to you real fast and then you guys can make um, up your choice. So we're gonna start in our hollow body. I'm gonna go ahead and do the one with my arms by my side here. So here's my starting position. I'm going to pike through my hips and then I'm going to roll through my spine and try to bring my sits bones straight up toward the sky. My thighs are parallel to the floor. From here, I'm going to slowly roll down, keeping my legs straight, straight, straight to my toes, reaching away, 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 away. Yeah? Now, some of you might be super bendy, so that's awesome. Uh, but we don't want to go here. Not doing plow. I don't want the legs to go further than this. Our abs need to stay engaged that whole time. And lower. Yeah? So we're going to do 10 of those. So once again, if you want to find something to hold on to, your couch is great, your chair is great, do that. Um, you can do a couple reps also with these arms overhead. Again, a little bit harder to control, but a great challenge if you want one this morning. So that being said, let's go ahead and head down to our mats, get started here. So once again, uh, feel free to hold on to anything if you need to hold on to something. Make sure no one had a question. Um, yeah, I know, right? It did that for me as well. Um, all right, you guys, so let's go ahead and get started here. Um, so again, finding that shape. Once again, hold on to anything if you need to. Um, arms by your side, arms over your head, your choice. All right, so I'm gonna pick arms on my side for this one, for me. So I'm not gonna pick the hardest version. I'm just gonna kind of find something in the middle. So again, find that hollow body shape, and here we go, pike it over. Awesome. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and lower. See how slowly you can lower down. Perfect. And again. Use the core and lower. Remember we lower down from an inversion in the air. Sometimes we lower down really fast. This is going to train us to control it and lower down nice and slow with control. Knees are super straight, toes stay pointed. And up. Awesome. Make sure that the thighs are parallel to the ground. Someone can lay a picnic blanket over top of your legs. Have a little picnic on it and lower down. We have five more. Keep breathing. Awesome. Once again, if you want to switch up the arms at any point, go for it. Again, this is totally up to you. Modify how you need. Keep those ribs in. This is one of the ways or places where my ribs love to flare. So check in with that. Make sure they're staying in. Fantastic, you guys. We have one more. And let's hold it at the top here for five, for four, for three, for two, and one. Lower the control. And bring the knees into your chest. Take a breather. Awesome. While you're catching your breath, I'm going to go ahead and show the next one. Same options, holding on to something, hands by the side, arms overhead, any of those are fine. 
Straddle, so it's a little more intense. So my recommendation is don't go into your full straddle. So for me, my legs here are about 90 degrees from my crotch out. So I can go further, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna keep it a little bit smaller so I can keep it more controlled. So once again, holding on, arms down, arms overhead. Starting in our hollow body, I'm gonna open my legs, roll up, same thing. Don't let this happen, even if you can. Press up, press it up, roll down with the legs open, and then squeeze at the bottom. Open, up, 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 lower, slow, 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 and squeeze, yeah? So 10 of those. Same thing, um, you again might want to kick holding on to something or hands by your side if you had this option. Maybe not. Whichever one you want to do is totally fine. Um, I'm going to keep my arms down again by my side for most of these. So let's extend, find that hollow body, legs in the diagonal. We have open the legs, use those deep low abs, lift, lift, lift nice and high, and then lower with the straddle. Control, 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 control. Squeeze them together at the bottom. Perfect. Again, straddle. Get those hips nice and high. Amazing. You guys are doing awesome. Squeeze it together. And open. I want you to imagine that your toes could touch that back wall. And they're still lengthening as you're lowering down. And squeeze. Open. Take it overhead. Awesome, and lower. So for those of us that might be a little bit more flexible, this is actually a pretty challenging exercise because our bodies want to go further and we're purposely telling them not to. Awesome, and squeeze. A couple more, you guys. You all are crushing this. Amazing. Roll down. Imagine you're watching an amazing trapeze artist flying above you as you're doing this. And squeeze. Let's do two more. Last two. Awesome job. Hang in there. I love seeing all these legs flying around. It's awesome. And up. Last time. Slow, 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 slow. Squeeze at the bottom. Bring the knees in. And go ahead and rock yourselves up to seated. Awesome, you guys. I'm going to check on my time here. All right. Still doing all right. Grab some water if you need it. All right, we're gonna come onto our sides and work on our core control um, in this direction. So imagine when we do these exercises that you have two panes of glass. The pane of glass right here, and the pane of glass right behind me. So I can't rock forward or back. You're going to want to, that's what's gonna be difficult about this one. So three options, sorry, three options, three options. You can prop up on your forearm here. This is gonna be more work for your obliques underneath. So this will probably be the most intense option. Option two is to come down and prop your head on your hand, a yoga block, a pillow, or extend it all the way down. Any of those are fine. So um, I want everyone to think about when we do, um, again, hollow bodies, balances in the air, when we do wheel downs, any of that type of work where our legs or even flares, like flare kicks in the air, any of that where our core has to be super tight while our limbs are doing different things. So this first one, again, if you're here, it's gonna be easy to wanna do this. So all I ask is check you stay here. We're gonna do some big leg circles. The purpose being holding this. So my front leg's gonna come forward. I'm gonna reach it up and then reach it to the back as far as I can without letting any of this happen and bringing it back through. If you want even more of a challenge, you can reach your arm up and swing it back. We're gonna do five in each direction. Um, and again, you're welcome to come down here um, as well. Either are great options. So I'm gonna, again, choose the middle, the middle of the three. So keeping that core super tight, you have a pane of glass here, a pane of glass here, you don't wanna break the glass. Again, you can also use this hand to brace you to help out a little bit for more of a challenge reaching the arm overhead. So we have one leg reach forward, we're gonna reach it up, all the way to the back as far as you can go without this happening, bring it through. Forward, and 
this is parallel here. You can turn the leg out a little bit here at the top if you want for more range of motion. But otherwise, keep it nice and parallel. Three more. Stretch those knees, point those toes. Keep that core super, super tight. Again, really focusing on our lines here. It's easy when we're in the air to forget about some of those finer details. So we can just focus on those lines and those details right now and pause. Awesome. We're going to reverse it. Reach that leg back. This one's a little bit harder. All the way to the front and bring it forward. Awesome. You guys are doing great. Again, we're going for the control here. It's not how fast or how high we can move our legs. It's how controlled we can be and really engaging. So my abs are working real hard here. Awesome. Last time. And bring it in. Fantastic. Um, I am stealing one exercise um, from Staza that she did that was incredible. I really loved it. It's going to really work on our pike or our um, hip keys and all that good stuff. So you can either stay down, prop up, your choice. But I'm going to hover my feet off the floor. I'm going to fold from my hips to swing my legs as far forward as I can and then squeeze my butt to bring it back. Once again, none of this. Keeping it nice and parallel between two panes of glass. We're going to do 10. All right, here we go, you guys. If you want to prop up on your forearm, you're going to get more of an oblique workout here. Otherwise, stay down. So we have pike it forward, squeeze the butt, reach it back, and forward. Imagine you have a beautiful mermaid tail on, or you're, again, an amazing acrobat that's doing all these crazy flips in the air, and you have to keep those legs super tight, super straight, point those toes. Awesome, we have a couple more. Make sure you squeeze your butt as you go to the back. Awesome, two more. Fantastic, we're gonna hold it forward, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, squeeze the butt, squeeze it back, release. Awesome, you guys. All right, we're gonna swing that around and do both of those exercises on the other side. So we have our big circles, five in each direction, and then we have our um, hip key hike forward. So once again, lying down. Again, two or three, two panes of glass. Keep that core tight, top leg, reaching forward, up, all the way back, and squeeze it in. Forward, up, and back, and in. Awesome job. See how straight you can get those legs. Imagine they could just go on and on and on forever. Pointing through those toes, stretch, stretch, stretch. We got one more. Awesome. Yes, and let's reverse it. Really hold on to your center here. Here's where you want to go back. This happens a lot. But try not to let it. Squeeze your core and your butt up and forward. You guys are awesome. Two more. Yeah. And last time. And rest. Fantastic. If you want to change your position, go for it now. Otherwise, stay put. Core super tight, hover those feet off the floor, and let's pike it forward and swim that mermaid tail back. And forward, and swim it back. Good, awesome. Squeeze your inner thighs together, that's really gonna help. Awesome, we have five more. Straight knees, pointed toes. Use those waist muscles, let's do three more. Last two. You guys are awesome. Last one, hold it for five, for four, for three, for two, and one. Sweep it back, lower, and rest. Awesome job. All right, I'm gonna check my time real fast. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next thing so we get through. So if you have your flex band or your towel, uh, now's the time to grab it. Um, so we're gonna do a couple things with the upper body, focusing more on shoulders and arms, all that good stuff. Um, again, does not have to be a flex band. If it's a scarf, a, uh, even some nylons, anything you might have works totally fine. So I'm gonna lie on my stomach here. Now, it's easy to wanna dump into your low back. When you're down here, I do that especially. I have a very arched low back. So you really wanna think about the bottom of your rib cage and your hip bones coming toward each other. So my sits bones are pointing straight back. So 
I'm not dripping down. That way I'm kind of more of my hollow body shape here. Um, so you're gonna take your band. Um, it doesn't really matter how tight you have it, but I want them to be about shoulder width apart. So I don't want them all the way out here. I'll show it this way. And I also don't want it here. So that's gonna bring the shoulders in by your neck. This is gonna be a little wide. Imagine where your arms would be if you were doing a dead hang. That's where I want them. And then as much little resistance as you want with your arms that wide apart, okay? So that's where the arms are gonna be. So I'll show you guys real fast. So I'm gonna hover both my arms and my legs off the ground. My head is gonna stay down, because again, I don't wanna break that line with my head up. I want it down nice and long. So squeezing my butt, I'm gonna lift both of my arms and my legs off and hover. So again, really trying to open the shoulders here, but keeping a nice tension, and you should feel this engaging your lats a bit. We're gonna do five of each, I'm sorry, five, both of them together, my bad. Hold it up, and then you're gonna lift and lower, Squeezing just the glutes for five, hold it up. Lift and lower, just the arms for five, yeah? So again, really working on engaging our core muscles in the back. We've worked a lot on the front core muscles, now I wanna focus on the back core muscles. Um, really thing that's important here, please squeeze your glutes. That's gonna protect your low back so this doesn't happen, yeah? So again, think about the bones going back. All right, coming into that position, really squeeze your core. Head in line, shoulders down. Let's lift both together and lower. And you may not go very high and that's okay. Again, we're just activating these extensors here. Awesome, let's do two more. Hold them both up. Now lower and lift the legs, keep the arms where they are. Squeeze the butt. Awesome, two more. Hold the legs up, lower and lift the arms. Imagine those shoulders are gliding down the back. Keep tension in the arms. Keep squeezing. Last time, lift everything up as high as you can and lower back down. Awesome job. That was great, you guys. All right, let's go ahead and sit back in a quick child's pose real fast. Again, just stretch your spine out. Just for a second. Awesome. All right, and then sit back up. So just find a comfortable seated position here, hang on to your band or your towel or whatever that is. And we're gonna work on our extension and mobility for our skin the cats, yeah? So skin the cat is where our arms completely and locate as they come this way and then coming back forward. So again, we're not hanging off of anything, we don't have that type of resistance, but we're gonna work on maintaining that mobility. So, you can, do not have to do this with a prop. You can literally just reach your arms up by your ears. So palm fingers are gonna turn down, rotate back behind you, and then come back. For most of us, we'll be good to use a band or a towel or something. So again, start by going a little bit wider than shoulder width. Always wanna go a little bit easier first and then make it more intense rather than going to the most intense place right off the bat. So again, wherever your legs are comfortable, Ribs in, we're gonna reach our arms overhead. Now, trying to keep those ribs in, I'm gonna let those arms come back behind and they might stop here, that's okay. And then just bring it slightly forward. If you have the range of motion to bring it further, great. Once again, we wanna keep that form as we bring it back through. As someone that pops their ribs a lot, you're gonna really wanna do that here. So I want everyone to really focus on this connection, even though we're working on the arms. So that really hollow shape. Um, and then if you find it too easy, you can always choke up on your band or your towel or whatnot. So let's do five of these, you guys. So starting with arms down, ribs in. We're gonna reach overhead, draw those shoulders down, allow it to open back, lift the ribs, nice and slow, and then coming back. I personally love these. It's, I'll be honest with you guys, it's one of my favorite exercises. It's really good for you, but it also, oh my gosh, it just feels so good. Um, and then coming back forward. As we do our next two, uh, just notice that there's a spot that's extra tight or feels a little, uh, for lack of a better word, sticky. Because we're gonna hang out there for a second after that. So again, just making sure we keep this mobility, range of motion in our shoulders. And then all the conditioning work that we do with upper body in all of these workouts are really great strengtheners. So I would definitely recommend doing some of those. Um, 
as well as doing this one. We want both strength and mobility um, to do a lot of moves. We don't want just flexibility and we don't want just strength. Now go ahead and find a spot that was maybe particularly sticky for me and I'm right about here. And we're just gonna take a couple deep breaths here. And release as much tension as you can. Awesome, and then bring it all the way back through. Awesome, roll those shoulders a couple times, roll forward. Gonna check our time. Perfect, we have just enough time. So um, I feel like this has been used in one of our circus workouts before, but I'm gonna go over it again. Um, you hear your teachers or instructors or your coaches yell at you, point your toes, point your toes all the time. Maybe you don't 100% understand what that means, and that's okay. I did it when I was first taking dance, and I just had my instructor say, point your feet, and I was like, Okay, <laughs> and it's not just curling the toes. So for those that may not know this one, it's really amazing. Um, we're just gonna do a couple. So here's where if you have a flex band, use it. You could use a scarf for this. It may not work quite as well. So if you don't have a TheraBand, you can do it without a TheraBand. TheraBand just adds more resistance. So if you have a band and don't even wanna use it, you don't have to. Important thing to note, when we're pointing our toes, we really wanna think about pointing through our ankle joint. So I'm pointing through my ankle. Notice my toes are still pulled back. From here, my toes are just going to lengthen. There's my pointed foot. Then from here, I'm gonna pull my toes back while still keeping my ankle pointed. It's kind of tricky. And then flex, flex, flex really hard from that ankle. So it's a four step motion. I'll show it again with my foot off the floor. Point through that ankle. There's where the big point happens. Toes lengthen rather than curl. Toes pull back, foot flexes. Um, doing this with a band is also going to strengthen your ankle. So for any um, ankle hangs or toe hangs, that's gonna make this joint really strong as well. So I'll show you a couple with the band. So feel free to play along with me with the band or just um, as I was showing that just now. Either is totally fine. Um, the band can kind of roll around a little bit, that's normal. I like to make sure there's a little bit of band above my toes personally for this specific one. Um, that tends to make it kind of roll a little bit less. So sitting up super tall, and the band bunches it sometimes, that's totally fine. So again, we're gonna point through that ankle, lengthen those toes, pull the toes back, flex the ankle, perfect. Let's just do five, I think that's all we're gonna have time for. So point through the ankle, lengthen the toes, pull the toes back, and flex. Whether you're a dancer, an aerialist, um, this has been one of my favorites. It's what's really helped get my ankles and toes super strong. Again, you don't have to do a ton of these, like five to ten, multiple times a week. You're still going to see some results. All right, let's do one more. Now I want everyone to come to that full pointed foot. Now just let the toes come back and point the toes again, five times. So I'm pointing through my ankle the whole time and I'm just isolating these toes. Awesome, perfect. Last time, and then flex, flex, flex really hard, perfect. All right, let's do the other foot real fast, with and without the band. Again, you can just do these without the band as well. I like to do both, actually. Um, I just wanted to definitely show the band uh, for those of you that have one at home and might want to maybe start doing these guys. Um, once again, let's point through that ankle, lengthen the toes, Pull the toes back and flex. So yeah, not a lot of teachers will tell you that that initial point happens from the ankle. So for those of us that have super high arches naturally, I am not one, uh, their feet are just naturally always gonna look pretty and pointed because of that high arch. So for those of us who don't have an eye high arch, I am one of them, this is a great way to strengthen the muscles in the arch so I can at least use what I do have. Um, a lot of people have asked me, since I do dance, how do I get higher arches or more pointed feet? Um, this is a great exercise. And again, it's one of those things we sadly have to work a lot with what we have. We can improve what we have and often attain more. Um, and some people, again, are just born with some natural more range of motion in some areas, but it does not mean we cannot strengthen what we have and even improve a bit what we have. So let's hold this last one. And let's do those toes again for five, for four, for three, little guys, and two, and one, and flex, and release. All right, you guys, that concludes my section. Thank you guys so much.
Um, I'm going to hand it over to the lovely Janelle. She's going to stretch us out a little bit and work on our split sum, which are also very important circus lines. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to her. Hi, everybody. Uh, my flowers definitely fell off during the jumping jacks. So sorry, not sorry. Um, Casey, thank you. That was really lovely. I especially love the toe pointing. That's like one of my favorite exercises with the stretchy band. Um, and it also, for those of you who are doing it, there is a learning curve involved to not smacking yourself in the face with the band. So if that happened to you, you are not alone. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about one of my personal favorite circus lines and also the audience's favorite circus line, which is the splits. Um, we only have about 15 minutes. And so I'm going to give kind of some concepts and like things to think about. And then we'll go through a series of splits. I know that our legs and our hips are not super duper warm at this point. So this is less about getting the deepest stretch that you can and more about thinking of the different concepts and orientations. So this is not the time to really push your splits. Um, okay, if you have questions, go ahead and just unmute yourself and say them out loud because I'm on my phone and the chat is this big and I'm not gonna see it if I'm over on the other side of the room. First key concept about the splits. This May, is. I'm uh, sorry, Janelle. Yeah. One second, Janelle. Um, I just need yeah. to say, for uh, privacy purposes, if you do oh, unmute thanks. yourself to speak, um, if your yeah, video yeah. is on, it will be on the YouTube video that is public. So please do Thank it. You, Use Kathy. it by all means. Just know that um, your video pops up. So you can turn that off if you want. Thank you. I appreciate that, Chrissy. Yeah, I want to make sure everybody feels like safe and comfortable for sure. Okay, so first key concept uh, is the difference between square splits and open splits. So we're talking about our front to back splits, not our straddle. Um, as a contortionist, one of the most important things for us is to stretch our square splits so that we have really even solid uh, symmetrical hips in the splits. Um, and that means that we then have freedom of movement with our body and with our legs on either side of the splits. In a lot of dance, particularly in ballet, Casey will know, an open split is preferred. So what that means is that the back hip is open and the back leg is really turned out. And the purpose of that is to be beautiful and have lots of extension in a leap. So be, to be able to get in there quickly and then get out of there quickly so you can land on your feet. Neither of these is wrong. Both of them have applications. So we're gonna look at kind of the difference between square and open splits and at what the transition between those two is gonna look like. So again, knowing that our legs may not be super warm. So this is not the day to push it. This is just the day to explore the transition between the two. We're gonna start in a straight front leg position and we're gonna check in with our hip bones to check for squareness. Those little hip bones that stick out that we felt pressing into the floor when we were lifting our legs earlier, we want both of them pointing the same direction. This is gonna indicate squareness in the hips. If my hips are square, that means that my front leg is basically just sitting down like this. Check in with those hip bones. Make sure that they're both pointing the same direction, right, straight forward. And go ahead and slide forward until you feel that your back hip is getting left behind. That's usually where we start to lose our squareness in our hips is that back hip being like, I can't go any further, I'll just open up instead, um, which brings us to our open split. So what we all wanna find here is that moment of transition between squareness and openness. So just play here, sliding, finding that moment where you're like, oh, I lost the square. And it may be pretty early on, it may be really late on in your split, but be honest with yourself. And let's talk about how to come back to square if we started to turn out. If you started to turn out with the back leg, you're going to press down hard into the ground with your hands. This way your body um, is held up by your arms so that your legs are not doing the work of holding you up, your arms are. That gives your legs the freedom to move a little bit underneath you because they're not bearing your full body weight. So here my back hip has started to open up a little bit. I'm gonna press really hard with the arms and I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna think of pulling my front heel back toward me, and I'm gonna think of rolling my back hip forward. 
There's lots of other cues you can use to get that sensation of rolling the back hip forward. One is to think about putting the front of the back thigh onto the floor. So instead of feeling the inner thigh on the floor, try to feel the front of the thigh touching the floor. You can play with this here just in that little moment of squareness to unsquareness. We're a little bit nitpicky up in here, but that is okay. Definitely keeping engagement in the back glute so that I'm helping to press that back hip forward. Okay, come on out of there. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Experimenting with where for you that transition between square, square, square and turned out in the back leg happens. And it will probably be different on the different sides. So just be really honest, be really patient. Just know that we're not super warm. We're just feeling for the transition in the hip. Straight front leg, check in with those hip bones. Are they both pointing the same direction? Start sliding that front leg forward. And when that back hip gets left behind, pause. Feel that open split position. Press down into the floor hard with the arms. And then go ahead and pull the front heel back, engaging the glute of the back leg, putting the front of the back thigh onto the floor. Beautiful. And then you can go back, sliding forward, getting a little bit unsquare, and then readjust. Good. And move through that a couple more times, just on your own time, feeling that difference. Feeling those deep muscles like way down in the low abdomen and like inside of the hips that have to do the squaring for you. Yeah, this is awesome. Good work, everyone. So nice. One thing you might find, just depending on how um, quickly your body adapts to the stretch, is that as you do this transition a couple times between slightly open and then re-squaring, you might find that you're able to square even further down in your split. Um, this moving through this transition is lubricating the joint, connecting our brain to that joint so that we have more minute control over it and stretching out the muscles that surround the joint. Okay, come on out of there. Beautiful. Very nice, good work team. Oh, I just muted myself, okay, great. Very good, okay. So the next thing that I wanna talk about in this split is the concept of, it's an extension on this, of train square, perform open. And this is something that a lot of like old school circus folks will say, um, which is the idea that when you're training, you wanna train as square as possible because that's gonna get you the most stretch and it's gonna gain you the most flexibility and give you the most stability. But then when you go on stage and you wanna wow your audience and you don't wanna be like just that far above the ground, go ahead and open that back hip because for a lot of us that lets us lower down and give the illusion of a deeper split. Um, so we're gonna play a little game. It's kind of like red light, green light. Um, we're gonna be transitioning just like we were between our square split and our open split, but we're gonna also be doing it with our face uh, and doing a little bit of clowning as we do. So the way that it's gonna look is you're gonna be very, I'm gonna face you so you can see me. You're gonna be very serious, I'm training, I'm in my square split. And then when I say, you're on stage, open split, arms up, grin, smile, look at your audience, wave your hands around, do something fancy. As long as that doesn't compromise your hip or your hamstring. If you need to keep your hands on the ground to stay stable here, you can still smile like crazy. The audience will never know. Okay, so we're gonna do that a few times with each leg. Go ahead and get into your square split. Serious business, training face. Roar! Channel your inner nine-year-old Russian child. And now you're on stage. And now you're training. Check that it's truly square. Very good, make sure those toes are pointed. And you're on stage. All right, and then same thing, other side, go ahead and switch legs. Organize yourself on this side, get those hips nice and square, point those toes. Serious times, training times. Your coach is looking at you, don't mess up. You're in your square split. And now you're on stage. And you're training. 
Check that you're truly square. You didn't just lift up, but you also squared the hips really, really good. And you're on stage. And then last but not least, the most confusing one, you're on stage, but your coach is in the audience. What do you do? All right, and come on out of there. Good job. Very <laughs> nice work. Um, fabulous. Good. I hope that our hips um, and our hamstrings are starting to feel a little softer and longer. Do, do, do. I'm just going to try for a quick time check. Oh, perfect. Very, very nice. Oh, good. I'm glad that that was fun. We are actually at time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave us there. Um, congratulations. You guys did a lot with your body today. You made a lot of beautiful shapes and lines. Um, you can steal that game, especially those of you who are coaches. It's a really fun one to do with kids because uh, they'll make a different goofy performing face every time. It's very entertaining. Highly recommend. Um, but yeah, always, you know, train square. You can perform open if you need to, to impress your audience. I tell you, you can do 500 really hard skills and the audience will be like, hmm, and you do one fucking split and they're like, yeah, it was the best thing I ever saw. So take advantage of it, right? Um, once again, thank you so much to Cressy and to Casey. And I'm gonna turn it over to Casey to say bye to everybody. Hey guys, thank you again so, so much for joining us this morning. I had so much fun with you all. I hope you guys had fun. Uh, please feel free to take any of those exercises to use to train at home. Any coaches, if you want to use that with students, um, they've been some of my favorites uh, to work with and train. Um, again, thank you guys so much for joining us. We have two more workouts this week. We have one Friday night. It's going to be aerial and dance. What? It's going to be awesome. And then Saturday, we have another uh, full body. Um, so some really more awesome stuff coming. So enjoy a day off tomorrow and then come back and join us uh, for Friday and Saturday. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to turn it over to the hostess with the mostest. Thank you all so much for joining us. Yay. Oh, so good. Thank you guys so much. Um, we are all so very blessed by the amazing coaches we have on this platform because, wow, that was really awesome. Um, if anybody was interested in the donation information, I've been having trouble with the screen share stuff. So it's my name on Venmo and it's also my name at Gmail or PayPal. Um, thank you guys so much. As Casey already said, tomorrow we have our aerial dance intensive mashup. So if you've been doing our intensives, um, they're not with use of any apparatus or anything, but we basically just work on strengthening the muscles that we would use in dance or that we would use in aerial arts. You don't need to be a dancer or an aerialist to get benefits from it. So um, I'm really excited. I picked some of my personal favorite um, mini classes that we've had in both of those and some new stuff and matched it together. Um, and then on Saturday, we have our full body and self-care workshop, which is going to be, I think, so as an IT band release for um, that self-care on Saturday. Um, the event pages will be up today, so please find them, invite your friends, and so much love. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you all so much.